everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. It seems that the Dodgers merch rollout was not the best one that they could have had. I think it was a big underestimation uh, from the Dodgers and the Dodger Stadium people of how strong Hollow Life fans were going to be. And also, you know, Hollow Life not wanting to have extra merch left over to have to take back home. I've been in line since 6 p.m. The line wrapped around the stadium. Now it's 1037 and not even close to getting the Dodgers collab merch items. I didn't even get to sit in the stadium seat. The Dodgers had one tent selling hollow merch for the whole stadium. I have to leave soon due to parking restrictions. So much time wasted. I understand it's not entirely cover's fault, but I wish it was prepared better. They kicked us out at 1110. So they get kicked out by security. They got kicked out by... Um, Either Dodgers security, LAPD, whichever one it was, the police department. Most stadiums are absolutely dog s at managing any type of merch sales. And what is most likely the case, the cover had no say in how they would set it up because it was a lot of times the stadium who sets everything up. All, all that Hollow Life has to do is provide them with the merch and the stadium is the one who sells it because they're using their employees, not the ones that cover wants to do. If cover had it properly, pretty sure they would have set several tents for this in order to make it work because they know how it severely in need of their stuff that their fans are. Here's what the person said, the good. Transportation from Anime Expo. The amount of people I saw pouring out of Union Station, shuttles wearing Hololive Anime Expo gear shocked me. Good job connecting two events after seamlessly. The few Hololive spots during the game meshed well. Seeing the entire stadium erupt into take me out to the ball game with Gargura was something special. Uh, Blessed Dodgers against uh, Dieter Ruler. Uh, for those that don't know, he plays a bunch of songs in certain situations. Most applicable is a Sailor Moon theme and Attack on Titan OP1. Kudos for playing Shiny Smiley Story. Drone Show, don't really need to say anything else. The Bad. Too few Hollow Life spots. There were a grand total of three spots. The Start, the Middle, and the Sixth. And Gur in the Seventh Inning Stretch. Could have easily added more theming to some of the signage besides the background colors. For comparisons, they usually cut the Mar Marachi brand every other inning for Taco Tuesday last year. Might be because of the limited budget or something else. Maybe because they didn't think it was actually going to be a big one in Dodger Stadium. I don't know. The merch line is the ugly. They underestimated the turnout. Could have easily added a second merch tent in the reserve or top deck level. Felt sorry for all those in the field level concourse. It was sweltering down there. So maybe there was a promo budget mismatch and completely missed a predicted merch turnout. The only thing I know is the insane people go for bobbleheads. They should have adapted and get an additional merch stand up hastily. Hopefully there's another Dodgers Hollow Life collab so they can decide to go for a larger giveaway. Like I said, a lot of that has to do with Dodger Stadium more than Hollow Life. This person here is someone who volunteered for the stand because they're the only one who understood the, uh, the Hollow Life situation. They said that they should have been sold in stores and have a buy limit that should have been set in place so people don't buy 20 of one thing. You know, you don't get scalpers. I will admit, also underestimated how much uh, it would, how many people would show up. Didn't think we'd get the longest line in stadium history. To be completely honest with everyone in this subreddit, even if merch tent was bigger, it would have made it would not have made much of a difference. The merchandising department pulled more employees from their stores in order to man the tent. If they had opened up more tents, the chaos would have followed. It would have been immense. So yeah, they just weren't prepared. It looks like they just weren't prepared. The buy limit was set all the way up to 10 items. That's too much. I did not know. Honestly thought that it would be something like two or three, but 10, that is too much. That means that things are going to sell out very quickly and you're going to have people spending like 20 minutes there trying to get like 10 different pieces of merch. Biggest issue is that there was one night event and it was assuming the reason why they opted for a tent rather than the place in the merchandise in the stores because Dodgers only had permission to sell the merch for that one night alone. In my experience, when it's been the case, you don't place merch in the stores because if by chance the merch doesn't sell out, they have to go to all the stores and repackage the merchandise to send back to cover the next morning. So yeah, things like that happen. In hindsight, things should have been handled better. Uh, the main stores, they should have been put into the main, main stores. It would have given more chances for people to buy. Most of the blame does fall on Dodgers for failing to recognize just how big of a market they were tapping into and not planning accordingly. Cover is mostly blameless for this. It, it, my only possible complaints being that they should have negotiated for merchandise to be sold in the stores. Cover trusted Dodger Stadium, and that's the issue. They trusted Dodger Stadium to know what to expect and to have enough people to sell their merch. This is not on cover. This is more on Dodger Stadium. Um, or maybe sell the merch online. I feel like it would have been the best option to give people the option to buy either at the stadium or online. Again, Dodgers are too greedy and cover not greedy enough. A cutoff point was placed somewhere in the line, but to my knowledge, it was just a big mess. There was no way to communicate that those that kept lining up. 
Lastly, for those who suffer the night, said, I don't think the Dodgers will do any sort of public apology. I sincerely apologize, which is welcome. It's very welcome for what you have gone through. I know these words alone will not make up for all that you have experienced. I will not ask you to understand what why that happened tonight, uh, nor do I want you to forgive the Dodgers. Please continue to give valid criticism, even if it is harsh. But I would definitely advise we should all let it be known that while flawed in collaboration was, it was a good idea on paper and should not dissuade cover from doing it again. Basically, as Dodgers fan, I was disappointed by our lack of performance to accommodate the guests. I hope we can do another collaboration. That's the thing. They didn't accommodate the guests, which were cover, which is a huge corporation in Japan. They did not do it correctly. They thought one day, they thought maybe it was going to be ah, a small group of people, but no, it was way more than they expected. And that is the Dodgers fault. That is the stadium's fault. That is the organization's fault. Vox's 3D happened earlier this morning as of the recording of this video. And we have um, 36K seems kind of a bit low for someone who has 1.3 million subs. Even though it's streaming for prime time in countries where it has a lot of fans, CCV isn't too high. And again, VStats is showing here that they had CCV around 39K peak, 36K CCV, and it stayed consistent, which means that people actually stayed for the whole of the live. It sucks that it wasn't as high as it probably could have been, but remember, Vox still has that black screen stream thing happening to him, and also we have the Nidisanji dislikes that have been happening recently. We have the 3D is out Minotaur. Um, we have the look isn't that great, to be honest with you. The look isn't that great. Not very expressive. I mean, a lot of 3Ds aren't going to be expressive. Um, okay, okay, that's, that's several different boxes. And that the, the moves look very robotic, to be honest with you. Uh, again, I have a feeling a lot of these things were choreographed by him and not by anyone who's a professional. So I'm not going to knock him too badly. But a lot of this does look very robotic. Let's see other things that I've been doing. Actually, looks like he's trying to do something, you know, but um, unfortunately, like I said, I don't think they're paying any professionals to do chore choreography for them. Unfortunately, forgot he was having a 3D debut. I uh, can't imagine the amount of work that went into this 3D. But as a movie, I just don't know if Fox is just mediocre director or if the script is dumbed down for the audience. Some parts were good. Others almost turned the stream off. Yeah, there are some good parts and bad parts, but it's it really sucks that he's not getting support that he needs, that he was either forced or he decided that it was the best idea to do the, sh the, the stream. Uh, the yen, he had 454,000 yen. Uh, new Taiwan dollars, he had 29,000 new Taiwanese dollars uh, in yen. I think 29,000 yen or 29,000 Taiwanese dollars still. Uh, 2,300 Hong, Hong Kong dollars. Uh, won, he had 370,000 Korean won. Uh, US dollars, 251. So in total, he had 70, 770,000 yen, which is around five to six k it's not a lot but it's still really good for a uh you know a actual live fun fact yen is a highly probability coming from china not japan since youtube doesn't accept currency from uh chinese uh the, the chinese in general chinese people also tend to give super chats using taiwan dollars or hong kong dollars since it's the closest countries regions to vpn to probably more than yen i assume so yeah he got he got some good numbers but nothing too crazy and of course didn't watch Fox 2D, but man, I was surprised that Bynat Fogler was here, which is insane considering Luxium should have debuted first before Noctix. I knew some Nidhi sisters are going to say, yeah, it's pre-recorded actually, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but here's my thing. Fogler 3D model before his debut just made the hype quickly become spoiled as it was just someone told the person what's inside the, the gift basket. Yeah, basically you were, you were spoiled. The gift was spoiled. Instead of it be, being a big surprise. Nevertheless, I'm not sure quite if other Luxia members who debuted followed up Dr. Vox, just in case Didi Sandy tried to sweep their negligible dirt under the rug. So yeah, their thing is, Fulger was the only one out of Luxium or Noxix who didn't have a 3D. So it's really the first look at his 3D model. Based on all the info from Fulger, it's likely he may not have proper 3D debut since he is unable to travel to the studio in Japan because of his uh, personal situation, his personal health situation. Uh, and... If he doesn't have a full 3D, that's fine. Nothing wrong there. But hopefully, hopefully, he is able to do something for his fans and for himself because he deserves, Fulger's one of the people who does deserve a lot of support. Continuing on, finishing this up is, uh, you know what? Following my last post regarding my feelings about this, I'm happy for Vox. I'm happy for Vox. I'm happy at the middle of all the blunders Niji as a company has gone through since the start of it all. I am happy that at least the talents are earning smaller Ws uh, through the fruits of their own labor. You know, they may not be the numbers they used, they're used to. I hope the small string continues for the livers. Once again, my feelings are, are fenced. What do you guys think? Basically, good for the livers. I hate the company. 
But the Livers are something totally different. I have nothing against the Livers. Former Kindred, I don't have any kind words for Nidisandi's Golden Boy. No wonder his debut was as good as everyone says. Even after the Black Stream, why would you give a chance to celebrate minor Ws? It's just on a human side. The thing is, with the with the, the Black Stream, of course, I do give people uh, the uh, that side. He never apologized. So this W for him is not as nice as it like for Folger or other people out there who haven't done anything like Rosamy and others because it is tainted by the black stream that he did and he just never really apologized. So it's tainted very much so. A little snippet of what happened during the Nidhi Sanji EN Summer Jam. Of course, when the full numbers come out for V stats and other things like that, that's when we'll know when the EN Summer Jam, whether it was a big success or not, this looks like it is an absolute failure compared to what usually happens with uh, Summer Jams and other big concerts like a Hololive concert. If they ever, when they've done Hololive concerts for free, like their own summer uh, concert that they had, I believe it was last year in summer, when they had a situation where they messed up, like something got messed up in the way that things were going and the, you know, the agency that was going to be doing the, the live streaming, the platform didn't work properly. So people were having uh, issues with getting to it. So what did Hot Live do? They made it for free. And uh, what did people do? Like about 100,000 of them at a time came in there and started giving them a ton of stuff as a thank you for doing it. They pretty much paid for the ticket again because they gave refunds and they, you know, apologized for the technical issues and they did what was right. Now here, uh, yeah, Summer Jam, I'm not going to say it's a failure because of the fact that more than likely, a lot of people did end up giving Super Chats, probably not as many as they wanted, but in general, 11000 for a yearly, a big concert that was promoted a lot is not a lot. That's like just like a regular stream for a big company, uh, for a one streamer group. You know what I mean? This is for a whole group of people. This is where you would think that every single fan of that person would go in there or try to go in there since it's for free. You know, if I like anytime I've seen free concerts for Hololive, I go straight for them because I'm a fan of Hololive. But yeah, 11 KCCV is too small for free online concert. Hollow gets 100K plus with a summer concert. Like I, like I mentioned, that's what they do. Unfortunately for the fans and for the livers behind them, they don't care. They unfortunately they don't care. More news in regards to things going on with Kurosanji in the any color side with the bullets and board, the uh, the stocks, they're going up slightly 2541 from when they started 2450. So about 88 above. But still, a lot of people in the message board want to sell their stock of the people who own it. They want to sell their stock 80 percent of it. Uh, there's only like 10 percent that wants to buy. And the other percentage is kind of in the middle, but most want to sell. That's not good when you have a stock. That is not good when you have a stock. But then you have parrots, parrot 4chan's voice, sell, 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 sell. <laughs> Matter ideas, just buy the dips when free money via buybacks. Yes, exactly. Buy on the dip, sell on the high. That's what people have been doing. That's what people did. That's why instead of it being at 2800, it's around 2500. Because people bought on the dip and they sold in the high. That's what investors will always do. Looks like they're buying on the dip, anticipating the next round of buybacks. Don't have to wait another 12 months for that, though. If I remember correctly, seeing here mentioned that JP authorities limit buybacks. Any good comments on the page? None from what we can see. But yeah, the whole buyback thing, uh, it worked in the, in the short term. But in the long term, people are just going to sell because they don't see much value in it other than trying to get their money back. This is a big news story in regards to uh, everybody who's clipping on YouTube, which is a lot of people clip on both for Hololive, Nidhi Sanji, uh, Face Connect directly working with Face Connect talents and you know working independently. At midnight, we received unbelievable news from this person who had been clipping ENID live, translating into Japanese, and sending the content to the Japanese people. Simply put, YouTube banned a whole clipper and even stripped monetization. In other words, YouTube goes against the policy of every VTuber group. As usual, YouTube is notorious for horrendous copyright strikes, especially when JP companies are involved, so it's not that surprising. Two years ago, Toy Animation faced a huge controversy for banning 150 videos from an anime YouTuber content. Furthermore, they've doubled down by implementing a horrible comment blocking system where even many non-sensitive comments are getting banned. I've been noticing that on my channel. A lot of content that I'm just like, what the heck? I didn't know no curse words, no weird words, no banned words, no nothing. And it's being put into held for review. I'm like, what the heck? Since usually it doesn't happen, I don't check very often, but I have to check it a lot more often than I used to because YouTube is being dumb. Now, who's this person right here? Please share. We have recently received opinion from Team YouTube that all clip videos on YouTube are promotional and violate our policy. Could you please help me get a clear answer from YouTube? And they made a video here in regards to everything that's going on. Hello, everyone. 
I'm Gurdjian, and I post English translation clips. I received a message from the YouTube team stating that all clip videos on YouTube are promotional and violate YouTube's policy, so I'd like to share this with you. Let me explain the situation step by step. The other day, I received an email like this. In short, it was a notice of stopping monetization due to what okay, is known as YouTube reused Potter content. Program. On the same day, I submitted an appeal video, arguing the following points. According to the original stream's guidelines, posting clip videos is permitted. Yes. I provide original value through translation, editing, and commentary. That's fair use, yeah. My content is not auto-generated by AI or similar technologies. Now, here's the main point. The next day, I received an email rejecting my appeal. In addition, I received feedback from the person in charge, which was quite surprising. Oh, that is very surprising. Uploading content that someone else created is not a lot for our used content policy, even with their written permission. Promotion of someone else's content is not considered value added. Oh, wow. This statement indicates that the YouTube team considers all clip videos on YouTube are promotional and violate YouTube's policy. YouTube, are you serious? Clip videos are now enjoyed in various languages, genres, and formats. Exactly. And this statement implies that all of them are prohibited. YouTube is a platform, so the way it operates is up to YouTube. Therefore, this is not a complaint, but a confirmation. Is it correct to understand that YouTube's stance is no clip videos are allowed? This statement affects everyone involved in creating, featuring in, or even just watching clip videos. Please help spread this video and get a clear answer from YouTube. I want a clear answer from YouTube. Absolutely. This is not right. Hololive grew through clips. A lot of these small, smaller agencies, Face Connect, Idle En, Vispo En, all these people would not be, would not grow, will not grow if YouTube takes away clip channels. I got into VTubing because of clip channels, because clips of Watame and other uh, Hololive, uh, you know, talents. I got to know a lot of Japanese uh, talents out there because of the fact that there are clippers for them. This is not good. This is a part of the YouTube ecosystem. I can understand the whole reuse aspect, but this is fan created content pretty much. And all, I mean, that's why Hololive allows it. That's why Nidhi Sanji allows it. That's why a lot of other agencies allow it because they see the value of it. It's value added. Did we just become best friends? Yup. ME12814 joined the family. It's all value added. In one way, shape, or form, it is value added, and I personally do not appreciate that YouTube is doing this. I think at this point, this is starting to become maybe a little bit like harassment. I'm not sure. Um, that is definitely going to be affecting uh, people's uh, mental states. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the type of person that goes for harassment in, in any way. Just sad. I wonder if there's a library who refuses to leave purely because they don't want to abandon their character. Over here, um, you know, Mika Neko was uh, doing... Uh, the Twitter account uh, who used to be Rushi of Hololive, she's very similar in her previous look because she wanted her mama to give her the same type of look. You know, how Hololive becomes larger than life every single passing day, Miki Neko gets a FOMO feeling every single day. Probably. And that shouldn't happen, honestly. Just being human here. I know a lot of people hate me for being human here when it comes to Mikaneko and Rushia because a lot of people hate her. But you got to be human here. She is dealing with a lot. She has made a ton of mistakes. I, I will criticize her for the ton of mistakes she's made. She made a lot of negative things happen and she's done a lot of negative things that she needs to fully atone for. I understand that. But if it's affecting her mentally, she does need to take a break, honestly. A retirement League and Vishojo can't get those limelight, like Hollow Life, regardless of those Coco fanboys say. Every single time there's a yab, leads to graduation or termination. Hollow Life comes back bigger and better because they never treat anyone in favorites to begin with. So, yeah. And here we have Mikaneko talking about this. Uh, you know, the Wilted Rose uh, saying, I hope everyone is happy. I'm, you know, she, she dressed up as herself, as Rushia. And of course, her fans are going to be happy because people like Mikaneko, people like Rushia. It is, look, whatever it is, this was a big part in her life, a big time in her life. Don't take this away from her. Just because you want to be mean, just because you want to be harassing, don't take this away from her. As much as I have my issues with Rushia and with uh, things that she did and the things that Mikaneko did with being unstable in certain cases, just be kind. If you don't like them, ignore them, move on. But don't go and send any type of negativity to these people, please. That's one thing I beg. This is not good. I am just going to say to start out with, do not steal anything. No matter if it's an Edi Santi thing, it could be the worst person on earth. Don't steal anything. It's against the law in many places, in most places. And you're taking money out of someone's pocket. Uh, I find it funny, first of all, things is a piece of Alira merch that got stolen. 
Don't steal merch from vendors. It's very disrespectful and rude. Not to mention it's basically shoplifting. Even if they make Niji merch, please be respectful towards them and not be a problem. If you do this, then I will board my Gundam and hunt you down. Yeah. Uh, LMAO, someone just stole an Illyra happy in plain sight. Always disheartened back when uh, I figure out someone stole some of our merch. Because for one, we were selling at a loss since we were a non-profit organization. All we wanted to do was have fun with the fans. Exactly. Especially if it's a non-profit doing it. If it is a fan merch, don't steal. Even if it's a big merch, don't steal. It's just wrong, man. If you don't like it, then don't get close to it. Don't deal with it. Let the people who want to buy it, buy it. But don't go and steal stuff. That's just... I don't know. It's, it's, it fills me with ick to see that. If you're an anti-Niji, what are you even going to do with the stolen merch? Burn it or something? Might as well be in hinge enough to understand. Face palms, not uh, NDF, might say we steal merch for nefarious purposes now. If it was NDF who did it, why well, just say it to you that's not supporting your Oshis? Yeah, it's just not good. Just wanted to give that little PSA to you guys. Don't do this. Even if you hate Niji, don't do this. Let's take a look at this little bit of meme with an artist roasting Doki Bird. Let's take a look. Please, I hope it's fine. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, I displayed it and like a bunch of people actually touched it, so I'm very, I'm very, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. They're touching what they missed. Yes. They're yes, touching okay, the mouse I have pad. Like a personal question. No, not a personal. Um, so your new skin, uh, is it flat? <laughs> Happy! Boobs, <laughs> what do you mean? Boobs! <laughs> I can't say sorry. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Doki Bird has a very good sense of humor. Of course, there's no actual animosity there, but it's hilarious that she got dunked on uh, by them. Virtual Vacation is something that Mint was doing. I believe it was a smaller concert outside of the venues of uh, Anime Expo, but it was during done during that time so that she could have, you know, a time with her, her Phantomos, her Phantoms. Uh, crowd gift during her part of Virtual Vacation concert. She absolutely was on fire and popped off. The audience was incredibly hyped and the place went absolutely nuts during some of her songs. So happy to see the opportunity she's gotten and how well she's been doing. Hoping she gets the part of more concerts in a dedicated venue like this in the future. She won. She won against, you know, the company that didn't support her. And there you go. It was a small concert, a small venue, but still, look at this. People were having fun. It gives chills to you because she was able to experience this now. The, you know, doing all of this wonderful stuff. I get, you gotta love the community. You gotta love the community. Where was this? Damn, I can't believe I missed it. Left AX already. Uh, virtual vacation was only weeks away. It was a sold out. It was already sold out. Uh, it had Uta no Pandora, all these people. It was it was El Rey Theater. El Rey Theater is a like in a historic theater in uh in Los Angeles. So it was very nice for her to be there. Of course, she says, "Yeah, that was a good concert. I had a blast. Wish I was there. Uh, gonna live vicariously through the recording, crying. Generally had so much fun." Like the, the mints. Yes, of course, you're going to have mint people. Uh, Minto, you fulfilled my everything. You're going to have you're going to have people do that, of course. And you got to love it. You got to love the community. I love my community just like I know she loves hers. And I'm glad that she's able to get moments like this. The Doki Bird Dragoons are very giving. They decided to give to help Doki Bird's tomato farm. Proceeds will be going to Canada Food Bank. So the food banks, like I mentioned before, are something that I have used in the past and I've used even recently. Because, like I mentioned, uh, things aren't so great, but, you know, it is what it is. But I've used them in the past, and I use them con consistently. They are a great resource when you don't have anything uh, to fill your stomach. You can go to a food bank, and they help out so many families. Other than myself, they help out so many families out there in order to give them something to fill their stomachs, either when it's, it's children or other things. So I'm very glad that uh, Doki Birds Dragoons... Uh, have been doing this as this is something very close to my heart as well. And they have shown how big they are. The bigger uh, tomatoes are for larger donations, of course. The smaller tomatoes are for the regular donations. Every single bit counts. Every dollar counts. And of course, thank you to everyone who has given to that and anyone who will give to food banks in the future. I have done that myself when I've had more, more funds. Uh, thank you for that. And of course, Continue. Continue having this wonderful thing. They're going to need a bigger wall. Start colonizing Doki Standee, the sign of the right. Tomatoes must expand. Big W all around. Can't help but notice a random ass Doki bird in the background. 
Uh, Kroki my Oshi. Yes, the Kroki my Oshi. Absolutely. There's always a Kroki down here at the bottom. Uh, there's always a Kroki there. That was day one, I believe. And this is day two. It's gotten so much bigger. Thank you all for the people who did this, of course. All right, everybody. Time for a little bit of memes. Because, you know, memes can be positive. Memes can just be something interesting to look at. Uh, Hollow fans looking at Hollow Live Nights versus, you know, Niji Sanji looking at the emptiness. The emptiness isn't here because no one really cares about the emptiness of Niji Sanji except me, maybe. But yeah, Hollow fans are happy. That was a drone show that they had specifically done for uh, Dodger Stadium on that day. Next is, of course, friendship goals on the side of Doki Bird here which is always nice to look at. We have here, they're both getting Nendoroids. It makes me so happy. Uh, Mume is getting her Nendoroid as well. So friendship goals. We know that um, behind the scenes, they're friends. Of course, she is friends with Shachi, not necessarily Mume. Remember, always give them that respect. But yeah, she's friends with Shachi and friendship goals. They're both getting Nendoroids. They both have the commercial rights to the Nendoroids, aka Fillion doesn't, but they do. Just gonna throw that out there, sorry. Welcome back to another showcase of indie VTubers. Small VTubers that are either sometimes bigger than me, but smaller than me usually. I want to give them a little bit of chance to be shown to my community. This is Luna the Gamer. They are a content creator that is right now doing full-time VTuber content creation. They do not do any lewd type of stuff. They have, uh, well, they don't have any lore around their model. It is a free model. And there are times when I can't use it due to the game I'm playing being graphic intensive because yes, there are moments where graphic intensive games do make your, your thing become basically a slideshow. Typically, the cheap, they play games that range from anything from Saints Row 4 to Resident Evil 5, typically live stream with, her, with their boyfriend. And there's some live streams where if the game are, is more graphic intensive, it'll be shown on their channel instead, on the boyfriend's channel. They primarily do gaming, as I mentioned. They don't really have a, a schedule. They just pretty much stream when they can. So whenever you get to catch them, of course, over here on Luna the Gamer, uh, then take a look. They enjoy, uh, what they enjoy about VTubing is that, like myself, it's a mask to hide behind. It lets you be yourself without having to show your face because they, like me, have social anxiety. So they enjoy using their model that allows them to express themselves more easily. They are absolutely open to collabs for anyone who wants to. They plan on finish finishing Resident Evil 4 and Saints Row, Resident Evil 6 and Saints Row 4 with the boyfriend soon. Also plan on continuing the challenge of running Mario and Luigi's Superstar Saga, where we work together to finish the entire game. Their future plans are trying to get into a corporation, you know, because that gives you a lot of opportunities that you wouldn't have as an indie. And that's what I'm trying to do, give them opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have had themselves. You know, pay it forward as it's been paid to me before. Uh, the interesting things that they've done in VTubing is just that they love VTubing in general. They think it's quite fun. I have enjoyed myself too. So I absolutely agree with everything that they're saying about it being fun and a nice place to express yourself. Thank you again, Luna the Gamer, for trust in trusting me to show your channel to everyone else. And I hope you all check it out and see if it's something that you would enjoy. Thank you so much again for being part of the showcase. All for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord, there's Twitter, there's other places that you can check me out, Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.